In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can save data from our C Sharp program into an external text file. If you saw my earlier videos about reading data from a text file, you would be familiar with the tap analogy. Well, that analogy applies to saving data as well. We turn the tap on by creating a connection to a text file. We then write a command that's going to save the data item, and then we turn the tap off by closing the file at the end. So I've got some code here ready to go. I've got a variable here that I'm going to store the value I want to save to the text file. Lines four and five here is where I'm asking the user to enter that new data. Line eight is fairly similar if you saw my video on the stream, write, stream Reader. Instead of using Stream Reader though, I'm going to use the Stream Writer class. And instead of SR, short for Stream Reader, I've used the variable SW, short for Stream Writer. I could call it Writer on its own, I could call it whatever I want, so long as it's not a C-sharp keyword. And like before, we open up the text file so that uh, its content, we've, we've made a connection to this text file, I should say, by specifying the file name. Because I have got this text file stored in my project folder, over here we can see that in the Explorer panel, I haven't actually had to write the path to the text file. If that file was stored, say, on my desktop or somewhere else on my computer system, I would actually have to include the full path to that file um, over here inside the parentheses. Now, it is possible with StreamWriter to have only the name of the text file there. It's made a connection to this file and it's opened up the file for writing. By default, it would also be set to true as a second parameter. So if we don't have that there, it is still going to default to true. But true applies to this code. Let the water flow as we're doing the actual saving or writing of the data from our C Sharp program to our text file. And then once we're done, we're going to turn the tap off. So if I run this program, if I just save that and come down here and run it with .NET Run. If I enter the name Daisy, now I've got some code um, below that would output the contents from the updated text file. So we had Mickey and Minnie that was there and then Daisy. If I go over here and flip to the names.txt, there's Mickey and Minnie that I had before. Daisy has been added. If I run the code one more time, and let's time this time let's add Donald. We go up here to the text file and we can see Donald was appended to the end of the existing data. Now that might be what you want. Each new piece of data is appended or just tacked onto the end of the list of data that exists already. But there are some times where you don't want any of that existing data. You actually you want to overwrite everything. So the way to do that is we go up here in line 8 and change the true to false. And then if I take that there, and I'm going to, let's say I can get rid of that there, I'm going to save data, this new name, to the text file in exactly the same way I did before, sw.writeline, and in parentheses, what is the name of the data we want to save? But let's look at the difference. This time I'm going to add Pluto. And when I come over here, I've only got Pluto. If I run it again, our text file has Pluto, nothing else. And this time I'm going to enter Goofy. Again, over here, Pluto's gone. What's happened to Pluto? He's been overwritten entirely by Goofy. <laughs> 